Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. CM Punk comes out, and he is happy. He says, I'm happy because I have not been to Baltimore in over 10 years. I wasn't happy to lose, he said, but SummerSlam wasn't a guarantee. Tonight wasn't a guarantee. But you people love me because I get knocked down and I get back up again. And I was hurt in January. I was told nine months. I came back in five, he said. Did you do the math? I was like, January, February, March. It was April, six. It was six. May? It was six. No, it was more than six. He literally said he got cleared two weeks ago. If he's talking about being oh, no, back on TV, being, uncleared. No, being back being back wrestling, his first match, he was he had his surgery uh, first week of February. He had his um, first match on August 3rd. That's exactly six months. Uh, well, it's not five, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but, I mean, the point is... is I mean, that injury... So, Phil, I am telling you when you are telling a lie. Okay. No, a big deal. But the thing is... is, is No, he is, told us to tell him. He has... I, so true. I told him. Okay. Well, the thing the thing is, is, is um, that injury, the tricep, it usually is longer. I mean, he was right in the sense... I mean, I think that as a general rule, it's about an eight-month uh, turnaround from surgery, and he did do it in six. So um, I don't know if, he's if he was 100%. I mean, I watched the match... And I felt he was being very careful, but, you know, I get it, you know, 40, 44, 45 years old, um, coming off of that injury, you know, I'd be careful too, uh, especially coming back in six months. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, he did, he did come back quicker than uh, normally would be the case. So he said he wanted round two with Drew, but Seth's music he didn't said, and uh, thank God Seth did not come out in a stupid outfit. He didn't come out laughing. He came out and he was angry, and he got in the ring, and the people still sang his song. I mean, he was still over, and he said, uh, and "Of course, it, he's over. He's, he's they always sing a song. That's one of the three." Dave, last don't... week you said the outfit was what got him over, and I'm pointing out here that no, he didn't wear I a didn't, stupid I, outfit, and I he was didn't... super over, and they sang I, his song. They were always going to sing, and they the out... and he took it seriously yeah. this week. No, the out. I never said the outfit didn't get him over. I said the outfit is part of his gimmick. And it's part of the gimmick that gets him over. He was part of the have... gimmick tonight. He was quite over. Well, of course he's over because they sing. They're going to sing a song. Exactly. He's a star. Exactly. But the point is, is that you can. He can. He's going to be just as over with. And and it it was still an outfit. I mean, it wasn't as as. He just as wore much... a leather jacket. Yeah, but it's still. And then he took it off and he wanted a fight. Yeah. Well. And they're about to know, fight and. Well, if he's not, if he's okay, if he's okay, I mean, he's going to be coming out there with. Uh, Outfits, because that's his gimmick. Drew shows up in the crowd wearing the ba uh, the bracelet again, and uh, he starts cutting a promo, and these two guys are still staring each other down, and finally he brings up the bracelet again, and Punk can take no more, and he chases Drew through the crowd. And so Seth is alone in the ring, and suddenly he is attacked by Bronson Reed. And at first, you know, Bronson just kind of jumps him from behind and, and uh, kits him with a couple of sentons, and then he hits a tsunami, and it's like, cool angle, you know? Yeah, we've seen it before, just set up a match or whatever. But then Bronson turns, and he climbs up, and he hits a second tsunami. And the crowd now is like, holy shit, that was two tsunamis. So they send down all these geeks to try to break it up, and they tear Bronson off, and they start, they start getting him up the ramp. He's about halfway up the ramp, and all of a sudden he goes running. And he runs down, and he climbs up for a third tsunami. And there, there are people in the ring tending to Seth. And he does this tsunami, and, like, dudes go flying. And they now just, the crowd's they just, going nuts. They just they just scattered. They basically, um, I mean, they could have just gotten in the way and stopped him, which is sort of their job, but they just scattered. No, this man was flying through the air. This meteorite was coming, and they were getting out of the way. And yeah. so now the crowd's chanting, this is awesome. So then he starts climbing up for a fourth one. And he hits his fourth one, and now this place is losing their shit. And he starts going up for a fifth one. And they're screaming, and he hits a fifth tsunami. And then he goes up, and he hits a sixth one. And six. Seth is, like, spitting up blood, and he's coughing, and he's hacking. Oh, yeah. And the fans now are screaming, one more time. They're going crazy for this. And Bronson starts to go up again, and they're all screaming. And now the the uh, the geeks in the ring are smart. They're like, let's get this guy out of here. So they drag Seth out of the ring. They drag his body out of the ring. And Bronson's standing there on that middle rope. And I was like, this is one of the best. Like, you see people get attacked on Raw all the time. 
but six tsunamis and dudes going flying and going up for that seventh one. Like, this was the best one in maybe years. I loved this so much. Bronson got over huge with this crowd. Yeah. I mean, this was great. Yeah. Well, it's, it's you know, it's you got to elevate the guy because Seth is a top, top guy. Oh, man, they and, elevated this guy yeah. all right. Yeah, they sure did. This like sure. this guy's going to be over for a career because of this. Like, if they show this whole thing again, like on SmackDown and on Raw next week, I well, mean, they'll man. On, they'll show it on Raw. And they may show it on SmackDown. They they'll should. Show they'll show it on Raw, though. For this sure. guy came off as just like the baddest dude in the world. Just killing Seth with six yeah. tsunamis. Well, they go all the way to get people over, which is a lesson that when you want to get a new person over, um, especially sacrificing a top guy to do it. You know, I mean, that's... That's how it's, that's, you know, that, that'll, that makes it even more effective. If you did it to Tozawa, it still would have gotten over, but doing it to Seth makes it a million times more effective. So after the break, Pierce is giving an update. Seth is going to the hospital. There may be internal bleeding, he said, even though they'd had Seth spitting up blood everywhere. And all of a sudden, Punk shows up and he's furious. And he wants to know where, where uh, Drew is. And Pierce says, I personally walked him out of the building tonight. And Punk's all furious. And then Punk says, and I quote, I just want to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Phil, you're telling another lie. That's two on this show. That is a lie. You did not just want to talk to this guy. Yeah. Like at AOP, he, wanted to, he wanted to steal his bracelet. Or not steal. He wanted to retrieve his bracelet. He wanted to beat his ass is what he wanted to do. Well, we'll get that. We'll get that. He's owed one now. I mean, he's going to, you know, this feud didn't ending with Punk not winning a match. So he's owed one. So we had AOP in the New Day, and uh, I mean, I swear to God, they rang the bell, they went right to commercial. I was like, how am I supposed to care about this? So they come back, and Woods gets the hot tag, and he's running wild, and uh, Kofi tries to trust fall off the post. Somehow, Akam barely catches him, and he smashed his head on the barricade. And so all of a sudden, Karrion Cross throws Xavier off the post behind the ref's back, and who should run down the aisle but Odyssey Jones? Well, they're getting the guy. They got, they've been. They've been. They've been. How long has it been since? It's been a uh, long time since he's been on the main roster and never done a thing. Well, he runs down, and they actually sold great for this guy. He made an awesome comeback. He did a double um, sidewalk slam. Yep. On both AOP members who are not small men. They're, no. They're very, they are very big men. It's a very effective debut. Yep. They made uh, this guy look like a million bucks. Yeah, very and effective. Then a little later, they're backstage, and this was very interesting. They're all celebrating, but it's mostly Kofi and Odyssey. And Woods goes, "He doesn't even know what's going on." He says, uh, "I didn't even know you guys were friends." And Kofi says, "Well, I met him at the PC. We got along great. And man, I told him you needed help against the, uh, you know, Cross and his crew." And Woods kind of had that smile on his face, like, "Okay, yeah." So it's, it's they're still teasing I Woods leaving. Help. They are very much teasing that it's going to be Kofi and Odyssey going as baby faces and yeah. Woods splitting off as a heel. So, I hope Woods is in a group because Woods as a heel single guy will have a short shelf life if he's not in a group. It would seem that way. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, a lot of times with WWE, they will change a successful act because they just feel that it's been a while and then the change will do us good. And often... Everyone suffers for it. I'm, I don't know that Kofi will do any better or worse with Odyssey Jones. It's a different dynamic. It's new. Um, but Woods is far better in the new day than as a single wrestler. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.